art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there, everybody. Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to martial arts on TikTok. And of course, if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, the little bell button. You know how to do the whole YouTube thing. Oh, also, um, if you are interested in training in self-defense with me and you don't live in the Indianapolis area where I live, um, you can now train with me online through our website, kenpo360.com. Information is in the description box down below. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. So uh, we're gonna go on up and uh, just search martial arts. We're just gonna see see what they got, what they got for martial arts in general. How, how cool, so we got somebody working the Wing Chun dummy, that sounds perfect. So Wing Chun is one of the arts that I teach at my school. At my school we teach uh, Kenpo 360 as our primary product. Um, then we also teach Wing Chun and Kali and Jeet Kune Do. Um, by themselves. So I wasn't really paying attention to what she was doing. So it looks like she's doing the uh, third section of the wooden dummy. And she's actually doing it quite well. So this is a hewn sow into what some people call the butterfly palm. And then a tan sow and then another high palm. She's going real fast, but that's that's fine. But we can go through and talk about what some of these movements actually are. So what she did there, that's the that's the hewn sow or the circling hand. So you saw she comes up and she does like this. Well, the hewn sow is meant to move to the inside line of a strike or a push. Specifically in this particular section of the dummy, um, this is really kind of like, you know, someone's pushing you or they're grabbing you and you're stripping their hand away from you to move to the inside and then and then strike along the diaphragm with a butterfly palm. But the hewn sow just single-handedly is actually a phenomenal move. Uh, it's actually something I oftentimes use as a replacement for the parry. So when you're boxing, you'll parry punches like this, but you can also hewn sow and what that does is as they punch, the parry knocks their hand this way, the hewn sow knocks their hand this way. And so it can create an unexpected trajectory for the opponent's hand, giving you an opening for a strike. All right, so there she was doing the rolling hands here. She kind of did those a little sloppy because it's really, when, you, when you're doing this, and of course every style of Wing Chun is a little bit different, so she, she may just come from a different school of Wing Chun, but we really want to see kind of a full rotation um, I always say uh, that when you're doing this section of the dummy, you kind of almost want to think about like you're grabbing underneath the arm. You aren't, but that's kind of the angle you want your hands. Because because earlier in the same section, you do the hewn sow with the wrist like this. But now we're taking almost like a full elbow rotation to get to the inside of my opponent's line like this. And so you really want those to be a little bit higher. The benefit of this being that, that it allows you to scoop and move people. So a great example of this would be like in wrestling when you uh, you may do like a, a, a far side arm drag. I don't know if anybody's done that, but I, I do it all the time. So instead of doing an arm drag like this, instead I do an arm drag like this, which allows me access to this hand. Um, so that's like how that motion can work. Yeah, so let's go back to this motion because this is kind of an interesting part of the dummy. Yeah, here we go. Um, so she's not made contact here, but we have the Tan Sao here, and then she's doing a side palm and a stomping kick on the knee here. Um, this is kind of cool because the way she's doing this particular uh, wooden dummy form is almost identical to the way that I was taught it. Um, for those of you who don't do martial arts that have forms, uh, that there's oftentimes a discrepancy between like the way you were taught a form and maybe like you know, the way someone does it online. And that's just because how oral tradition works. If you think about like the telephone game, that as, you know, like if you ever played a telephone game as a kid, a kid will tell another kid something, then they'll tell another kid something, so on and so forth. And by the time you get to the end of the line, the message has changed. Well, that happens with forms too, that, that exactly 
um, the exact details of every single form differ from school to school. Um, and that's just like a, that's a natural process. Um, but she's doing it basically the exact same way that I would do it in my school. Um, so you have the tonsil with the palm. Um, and they, I'm, I'm kind of scrunching myself up because I'm trying to stay in camera. So forgive me for having bad form, but she's doing the tonsil with the palm. And this is a example of Wing Chun's offensive defense. The idea is that as I defend one strike, I'm hitting with the other hand. And this is used all throughout, um, boxing and MMA and, um, I mean, kickboxing. It's just the idea that you can, I can parry and return, right? Or I could parry and return. So think about it that way. So, so as opposed to it being a one and two, it's a one motion. In this case, she's using Tan Sao, which is a dispersing hand. So if you imagine you push or punch coming at me, I'm coming on top of that strike and removing it out of the way, which then is exposing your rib. And so I strike your rib. Now, interestingly enough, in Wing Chun, they usually will uh, hit the rib with the open hand, uh, but in Kenpo, they'll do it with a closed hand. I tend to prefer to do it with a closed hand. Kenpo has this really great philosophy. They say uh, soft to hard and hard to soft. And that basically means like if I'm going to hit you in your head, I want to use my palm. And if I want to hit you in the body, I want to use my fist because the fist is going to have more penetrating power and I... And I um, don't run the risk of breaking my hand on your ribs, but I do run the risk of breaking my hand on your head. Um, but to understand about Wing Chun is that Wing Chun is a collection of tools. It is not a prescription of, of fighting. It is more of just like a collection. It's a toolbox of fighting. And so as a result, what we're going to see here is the, um, just because in the form you're doing it with the open hand, if you did it with a closed hand, that would not suddenly make it not Wing Chun. That in Wing Chun, you apply the tools where they are needed. And so to do a tonsil with a closed fist would not be against Wing Chun. Uh, it's just, it's not how you do it in the form. We've got another example of that kind of offensive defense here. There we go, perfect. So she's doing Jam Sao with a low palm. So Jam Sao means like dropping hand where you're letting the weight of your arm defend. Um, and for people who don't do Wing Chun, this is very similar to like the elbow shield in boxing. If I can get up a little bit that, that as I'm fighting, I cover like this. And so the forearm can drop on top of someone's strike, which is actually pretty great because it, le it puts you in position to hit them. So if you imagine your punch is coming in, I defend with my forearm and then I can come right in and strike. And then you can see she's coming in simultaneously with that jump sow and the low palm. Um, and this could be that someone, once again, think about like a double lapel grab, someone grabbing a hold of you and you pull, pull them into you as you strike, creating a, what we call the push-pull motion, which you see a lot in, like for example, like in Kendo, they do the push-pull with a sword. That I'm pulling you in as I strike, creating like a, a car crash effect when somebody is uh, coming to hit you. So uh, yeah, Jum Sao. Yeah, that's some pretty good Wing Chun. I'll be honest, and, and maybe <laughs> I'm a little bit of bias he's showing, uh, but when, you know, she was in this whole get up here, I was kind of assuming that her Wing Chun was gonna be kind of all show. Um, because to be honest, like the traditional Wing Chun uniform is like sweatpants and a t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a style of Kung Fu that's like known to have um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, known to have like a really fancy uniform or even like a lot of ritual to it, um, that most Wing Chun practitioners just would wear a t-shirt or like a, a sleeveless shirt, sweatpants, shorts. Um, from what I understand, it's really hot in Hong Kong sometimes. And, <laughs> but I clicked on it because you look badass. So it's, it's very good marketing. And of course, you know, be, her being a woman's especially perfect for Wing Chun because uh, the legendary story of Wing Chun is that it was developed by a woman for a woman, that it was developed by the Shaolin nun, nun Ing Moi, uh, for Yim Wing Chun to defend herself against unwanted suitors. So um, that's kind of perfect. So, you know, uh, whether or not that story is true is a subject of hot debate, but hey, um, you know, maybe this is kind of what it looked like.
So a lot of people comment on my videos having not watched the whole video to, uh, so to show me that you actually made it to the end, I want you to include the phrase uh, red kung fu somewhere in your comment and then you and I will know you made it to the end. And of course, if you uh, haven't subscribed yet, you've already made it to the end of the video, you're clearly enjoying the content. So be sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button and click the bell button so you know whenever I you know make a new video. And then, you know, as I mentioned at the start of the video, um, I have an online program now, Kenpo360.com. If you would like to train with me and even test with me online, you can do all that through our website, Kenpo360.com. And then finally, if you are in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to come train with me in person, all the information you need to get started on that is on our website, the School of Self Defense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self Defense. Fight on.